Well, 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 here we are back. Another episode. And this is Hardcores this weekend. On this episode, we got shot out. They are a Philly band. They um are opening Saturday at This Is Hardcore. Uh, the, uh, the vocalist and guitarist are my good buddies. <clears throat> I met uh, I met Marks at the B&B Bowl in Brooklyn. Uh, I don't know where to fucking hang out outside. He sat next to me and his nasty Newport cigarette was blowing in my fucking face. But we decided to have a conversation anyway. Um, he explained how he was in from Philly and he had nowhere to stay and the most punk rock shit ever. He was like, yeah, last night I, I slept on a fucking bench at, uh, at Tompkins Square Park and, uh, you know, he was able to charge his phone eventually in like a hotel lobby and shit like that. But it's just funny how he came all the way from Philly with nowhere to stay and said, fuck it, I'm going to see these hardcore bands, whether I got somewhere to stay or not. That's pretty cool. And uh, the homie Kareen. I just I knew he was because the band, but I first met him when he came to Tied Down this just a couple months ago in June. It's really cool to meet him. I always dug the band since I found out about them, and um, I don't know, really cool dudes just doing the hardcore thing, the fucking DIY way, the only way. And it's it's uh it just goes to show when you put in the work you get to open for this is hardcore fest that's fucking crazy we run down the whole uh you know how they ended up on the fest because there's lots of philly bands there's a big scene and joe hardcore has a lot of fucking friends so it's cool for him to reach down at the bottom of the barrel and pull out some some of the young kids and you know give them a chance i know shit that's really cool anyways I'm going to give you a quick rundown of a couple shows this week coming up. August stuff going on uh, Sunday, August 4th, in a couple days. Got Big Laugh, Slice, the Sissy Boys, Pluto's Kiss, and Field Note at Parts and Labor, put on by our own Richie. <laughs> Fucking Richie Knockout, that's his new name. Don't punch him. And then uh, Friday, August 9th, Julian's Birthday Bash. Uh, Dead Hangs playing. Laiuta, I think, is uh, closing out the show. Lockdown and Persist. R.I.P. contained. Solid fucking band. Cool ass kids. Sad to see them go, but I'm sure they'll come up with something here pretty quick. Then August 10th, Black Flag at the Tangent Gallery. For some reason, this one just s flew right past me, and I didn't even realize that was happening. But you pick and choose what you're doing. Then uh, August 12th, Got fucking uh, Firewalker and Off the Wall and Yaksaw and uh, Caw, maybe? C-A-W? At Edgeman? I like all those bands, except I never listened to Caw. Uh, sorry, y'all. I hope you're good. I'll try to check you out. Um, But whatever. Just wanted to have some dudes on that I find that are cool and good music. I don't know how to put it into words. When I like a band, I like a band. I ask them if they want to be in the podcast, and they say, fuck yeah. But I've been sitting on this one for like three weeks. I just honestly haven't had the motivation to, or time. I don't know. I can blame it on time, but I can find a fucking 45-minute block in any day to put this episode up on the internet. So my apologies to shout out the homies from Philly. I hope you guys have a great set Saturday. I hope people are in the door to watch you guys play, and... uh I'm sure it feels good to be on the big fest like that. And this is hardcore is a stacked fucking lineup this year. Uh, and they have a cool ass shirt. It looks like a, I don't know, like a Sesame Street. It looks like ooh, like four Sesame Street characters all put into one. Like holding a cop car with guns in their hands. So <laughs> That's pretty fucking cool. They got stickers. They got a CD. They got they had a lot of cool shit, man. They're really cool guys doing the damn thing. So give them a chance. Give them a listen. Holler at them. And uh, I don't know. Keep on keeping on with the hardcore shit. We're recording now. All right. Yeah. So. Well, thank you guys for fucking uh, doing the podcast. You guys are the headlining band of This Is Hardcore, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> if you read it backwards, we're the headliner. Uh -huh. <laughs> there you go. Okay, that makes sense. 
Uh, what day are you guys playing? Sunday. Sunday. Good old Sunday. Sunday fun day. Negative approach. Detroit hardcore. I know. Are they headline? Or no. Isn't uh some other Black band? Flag. Yeah, Black Flag. I almost had seven yeah, seconds. Black are they eight. on it too? Seven seconds too, yeah. Okay, that's why I, I was going to say them. They could headline if Black Flag wasn't uh, uh doing that. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Oh, that'd be got Mike B up in there. I remember picking him on like Tony Hawk. Uh, was it Pro Skater? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, no, hell I yeah, like yeah. He did that uh, like that Mongo. Like I think he, or, no, he did some weird shit. Like he was one of the like, like he pick up the board and do like a thing. Like uh, like it was only like him that did that move. I don't know what it was. Like he do like a plant, like a some sort of plant. Like he picked the board up or like a something. hand plant melon twist john but yeah he skates kind of like a goo uh, no nah, yeah <laughs> his stance oh, yeah. his stance in the game was always like like ed <laughs> yeah dude when i think of mike Vallely, i think of obviously if I, cky uh when oh. you know, but dmx song is playing when he put, took on those four dudes dude, n- n- <laughs> nothing better <laughs> like yeah. and so look when that came out like for you guys but we're probably fucking like in your diapers when that came out. Honestly, it was so long ago. Um, but like that was one of the first like a uh, few fight videos that I ever seen like that and like bum fights. Did you ever watch bum fights? Oh yeah, that, yeah. that's some wild shit right there. Dude, I remember bum fights. Well, I was in seventh grade. You couldn't even go on YouTube. There was no fucking YouTube. You guys are lucky. Um, we would uh <laughs> You have to download it awesome, like, like on a sketchy website, or actually buy the DVD, or just know somebody who can bootleg it for you. And uh, I just remember watching that shit and just being like, <laughs> "Like I'm like Dude, the suburbs. Like, I never seen homeless people. Like you know, I'm from the suburbs. Like it wasn't like that. So like for me to see that was pretty intense." Yeah, we were just talking about like bootleg DVDs like the other day practicing because. <laughs> getting like some cds done they're just like white cover og like kind of like blank disc sort of deal but we're just talking about some of the movies and stuff like we used to like see dudes selling on the train and like saw it after and like mark's had some crazy ones I was, like i was laughing i was like uh, yeah my old barber shop when i was younger hair wizards they used to sell all the new movies that would come out oh my god <laughs> before they hit the theaters <laughs> You got like a dude walking across sometimes, but like you know, is what you get. Sometimes they were a one though. Yeah, I remember I had a uh, f- fucking castaway on a bootleg man back in the day, and it was like a it was somebody recorded like in the movie theater, like when it came out. So I was like, I'll fucking watch it at home. But I remember just watching that movie. Like this movie's crazy as fuck, and it's bootleg. You know, like Tom Hanks is wild in that movie. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah. back on the topic of hardcore, uh, but how'd you guys? I don't even know who to ask. Like, I got you both here in my face. So, um, so how did uh the band get started? Like, who? How'd you guys meet? Let's have a little backstory uh, to the band. Yeah, that's, that's a question for him. <laughs> you know, I got recruited. Uh, no, nah, you were you were sought after. I vow. <laughs> yeah, this but this Mars is a funny origin too. So like. We're all just like me and John. Uh, he's he's my drummer, and we just like wanted to make music with like scumbag friends from Northeast Philly. who were on point, and like we go to shows, we dance, we like to make music for people who dance. And like so, got to a point where we were just like, you know, we needed like a bassist, and we had this show in Trenton, and like this dude. I worked at Sam Ash. It's funny enough that I was just sitting here because shout out Long Island, and they're they're closed now. For good, most of them, and um, that was the staple of my childhood a bit. But like, I'd be going in there jamming and riffing a bit. Never know. But uh, he would show up like without gear, and like he learned our set and bought the shit like just straight up Florida. So like, March is like you're, you're like I mean you say new guy, but like much more effort than like you know <laughs> most put into that shit. You got to go. You were going af- after work. Like, I see him as mud works. You know, right there. Yeah, got so, my first guitar there actually. Yeah, yeah. Look, I'm unfamiliar with Sam Ash. Uh, is it like a music store? I'm not- yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's 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 another guitar center essentially. So oh, okay. it's like a place. That, like, gear, my fault. Uh, they're not everywhere, I guess. I don't uh, think there's any around here. We got guitar center and shit like that. Yeah, it's a guitar center type, John. Uh, and uh, we would basically uh practice at like 
an air, like a raw, like a studio, like just raw in our neighborhood, like dead center of where all of us would be at. And like, we would already be hanging out there. So we would just be going to shows and decide like, all right, yo, let's, let's get active. Let's do it. So like, just started ripping it. And over time, and of course, Mark's just fucking, I don't know. Like I say, like you definitely exceed most people's thoughts because people were like, yo, it's in your band. Like, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> like, so. Well, he's a crazy person. It's like, you hang around that crazy Mark's guy. He wears, wears uh, offensive t-shirts probably. Offensive <laughs> t-shirts. Ah, it's more, <laughs> I, I don't want to bring up the meme, but. No, nah, no. Nah. <laughs> No, nah, let's uh, steer clear of any fucking yeah, we'll keep it PG today. No, 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 I'm just talking shit. Um, but no, I uh it's cool because uh you know, how old are you guys? Like I don't even know. What are you like 22, 25? Oh, He's 22, I'm 25, I'm 26 okay. in August. Okay. So John, I've known and played like music with, like we we were trying to start another project up before COVID. Uh and you know, shit the fan a little bit and then work and busy and he got married so we kind of timed it right so we were just like playing like he's like all right this is when we're gonna do this and like he just did and like we had good chemistry with writing and uh another friend of ours like he just does like audio work and went to school and was just like yeah like you know i'll get down if y'all can't you know get reliable people because i ain't on cat man we tried to go through it and like we shouts out and respect to everybody but like it's just like you got it gotta go gotta get it popping and get moving so it's like it's a couple of things but i'm glad that i got the people around me we're all from the same neighborhood and all know what we fucking want so it's good chemistry and real happy to be rolling in with like just bangers out there have to just get in popping it's been two years and like we're just trying to release more music and go to more shows and just get active it's fucking awesome um I, I like the band. I don't know for anybody who if it hasn't listened to you guys yet before this podcast, I suggest you go do so. I like uh got like kind of like the bouncy, like uh the hip hop vibe to it kind of in a way. And like like you rhyme and it's like a little hood, a little grimy, man. I fucking love it. Like I listen to it off. Drummer who loves rap. That's all you really need. Yeah, so good like, drummer, good band. I'm thank thankful for, for John and having a backbone with some hip hop. Please thank uh, thank uh, cause like I wanted to have like a, I remember like seeing like body count and having to explain to my uncle that like, yo, Ice T's in the band. And like, I remember like once I snuck out to go to that John, cause I was like a stoop kid and rough was, na- neighborhood wasn't the greatest. So they were real overprotective. So I had some crappy lie and it worked for about two hours, which was enough to get to Mayhem Fest, which is like uh touring, like it's like, 20 like another warp tour sort of deal yeah like, i remember that yeah so <laughs> by the time i was already there i was already chopped like i got the text i knew i was done i was like 14 and like yeah you're, you're here i'm like i'm like all right i'm gonna have a good time and then like see i see i'm like at least i got a good story for him right now I'm like that was... <laughs> so you just <laughs> snuck out when the man <laughs> was from there no, I know phone tracker with the Android, but oh, the lie God. didn't work because, you know, if you say you're down the street at your friend's house and she needs you to come home and make some noodles and noodles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Camden, New Jersey. That's not Philly. I ain't making the time. I, I... Damn. Subject you get your ass whipped. <laughs> yeah, there, yeah, there are a few of those. Not after a certain age, but there are a few of those. You, you know, but sometimes you just got to take that. Like, oh, just, you got to take it on the chin. That. You know you're about to have a good time. You, you're going to say, fuck it. I'll deal with this later. Like, if I make a home alive, then, you know, <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. So um remember, like, also seeing Cannibal Corpse, like, 11, 12 a.m. And my mom thinks I'm at, like, scout camp. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, Holy now shit. it's all, like, most of it's all out. But it's pretty funny coming mm-hmm. out. Full how'd circle. you get into the heavy music, Kareem? Like, uh, who was like, uh, how'd you find Body Count or even Cannibal Corpse? Well, dude, like, I was just going around playing like acoustic guitar at school and trumpet, and I like didn't really want to be there because it was just like a bad atmosphere. And music, the music room was always like dope, dope energy. I just get my work and go, and like anybody who's a band there know they had privileges, and they're like, yo. I can get out of class for this shit. Like, I'm out. So, <laughs> like, I had taken it and, like, rest in peace. He's not here anymore. My boy Steve Patechio would, like, just grab my fucking, like, I had a Colby 
headset and some like knockoff poppy store headphones that were absurdly louder than they needed to be. <laughs> Mess my eardrums up before shows. And he just would take it out and be like, what are you listening to? And he's like, you should listen to Spaz. You should, you should listen to fans like Death Star. You should listen to this. You should listen to that. So that shouts to, to Steve and rest in peace. Like uh, he was a big like autumn. He played rugby and was like almost twice my height and had barbarian hair. So I thought I was intimidated of him and he just like befriended me because we skated. So it was dope. And then like uh, after that, I started going out to like, like, you know, sneaking out, going to festivals, going to shows. And eventually like they, they folks understood. And like I was going around the, the electric factory, going around the voltage lounge, going around to like some Scranton shows. Shout out Clemo. That's where I met him like 17, like going out with this band Moral Code and like went over there and like saw this sick ass fucking like, like mixed gen hardcore like other like I couldn't even like know to, like I don't know they're called Defendant though and they're not around anymore but yeah the song called New Again and like I remember getting my jaw rocked so hard where I was like I kind of fear for my life for being at a show and like I don't know I was like a little new jack and I didn't really feel that before I just felt like you know everybody like you know it was a welcoming ass community for somebody like I just would see it and I'm like yeah like I want to be at this John so that's how I kind of rocked out yeah. Damn. And so the, you said you were like 17? Yeah, I was going to shows like 20, like 15, but they were like more so like the summer festivals in Camden that would hit every year. And then one year, like uh, I just like it was during like after like, I got kicked out and uh, like all that shit from like I got cross communicated or excommunicated from like religion. And all some shit with family. So I'd say now is the best thing for me because that kind of put me out on my own and shouts to friends, couches, uh, <laughs> the music scene and people because like, you know, I made made shit work on my own. And like at that time period, I was at shows, any show I wanted to. Like I was like not even 18. Yet. I remember there was a place called Champs Bar and Grill and there was a festival at Loud Fest. And uh, there's like, it's called Loud Fest. You had like Jesus Peace playing with like, Oh my gosh, a uh, lot of, lot of like sanction laid the rest played. Uh, and this is a small bar, like the size of my living room. It's not a little bigger. And it's in Trenton, Jer- or, uh, yeah, Trenton, and in Trenton, New Jersey. I've never been there. Yeah, it's uh, Trenton, New Jersey. And it's right across. And uh, I drove all the way to the Howell, New Jersey show originally with my one friend. We drove like two and a half hours, almost ran out of gas to get there got situated (laughs) and then we got to the venue and we were basically about to be stuck there and like some other kid who was like not able to get back because the show shut down just like he's like yo like i want to go to where the show's at they're like yo the show's at champ so i'm like yo get in so we we go uh me andrew mateo we drive down the fucking champs and we just go and like find out it's like 21 plus i'm 18 we're all pissed oh Cody Clark and Vian just it were Ian just they 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 know me from going around a bit, and I just got my neck grabbed. I don't even know by who, and I just got pulled in and thrown into the room in the middle of a laid the rest set. And uh, there's a few. Ah, uh, oh my God, I I'm trying to think on that lineup right now. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> hey, fuck it. Oh uh, yeah, I saw a lot of shows at that venue. I got like yeah, it was just funny. That's cool. But hey, so you know what really caught my attention? We just kind of glossed over it. I don't know if you, uh, you had mentioned you were, uh, you don't have to get into it. Excommunicated from religion. Yeah, <laughs> my fault. Oh, uh, yeah. No, no, that's no, no, cool. That just will like. Uh, was fucking uh, gay. I was waiting for you to stop talking so I could go back to that. <laughs> I was like, what? what? Uh, what religion? You said to say what religion? We we'll have to get into it, but like, uh, what were you? Oh no. So um, my mom at the time, like upon raising me gave me to my aunt, which was her sister. And uh, she was taking some time to, you know, to do better for herself. So around that time period, my aunt found the Mormon religion. And uh, the reason I say I'm not going to get into that, and I'll be straight clear, is because they ain't allowed black people into the religion until like the 1980s. And oh, it's 2003. Up. It's 03. So I'm oh, like, shit. this is still fresh. Right. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I'm not really I'm happy not, with it. <laughs> 
Oh, my goodness. Nah, it was a good escape and an outlet, but, like, none of that shit was for me. So I'm so glad that it happened because that shit prevented me from doing so much stuff I wanted to do as a kid, like skateboarding and play right. music. And right. I think my uh, school band had an opportunity to go play in Italy and sign a permission slip. And for a Frankfurt kid to go over there, I'm like, the fuck? Like, what? Like, all right, surely they'll be like this. They're like, no, there's this thing. You got to go to Washington, D.C. and see the temple. And I was just like, that was something that still kind of like bites. Like, Yeah, for sure, <laughs> man. I I can feel you on that. Like, uh, a lot of my uh, my relatives are like super Baptist. Like, I no, never that, no, no, that, no diss to anybody who, nah. who's religious or anything. I just want to come across it being honest on like the agony. Like that's like I don't yeah, know. I'm sure it's, it's a little like, strict for you, but uh, yeah, yeah. Like I know religious homes of people who make it work and they have their wax, but it's different when you got like two missionaries coming over and you gotta play the game of life with them. And you're trying to watch Monday Night Football, and you got <laughs> Bible study on here. Wednesday. <laughs> you got karate on Thursday, and you got church on Sunday. And like, they're trying to go early on Saturday to help out, and it's just like taking up at least fifty percent of my week. They were putting it before, like, you know, a yeah, lot. But you know, that was what that's that works for them. It doesn't work for me. So sure. once I got excommunicated, it was uh pretty much like you know if you can't stay here and uh quote unquote not good for the the church or this household you know i wasn't no son of no son of hers so that was my aunt and uh kind of shout out to all my friends for real <laughs> yeah yeah hey man at least you had uh you know a, a place to go a couch to sleep on you know people to support you after all that bullshit that's what cool uh -huh. man that's uh you summed it up well, you know, short, short and sweet, you know. Uh, I'm trying my best to not really no. deep dive or trauma dump on it, but give a light on what the fuck got me into this shit to the point where I would really, like want to be here. Yeah. And more importantly, like a lot of people who have like sturdy ass family dynamics be like, I ain't going to the show tonight. I'm cool. I'm like, yeah, that's fine for you. Yeah. Shit. I'm friends. <laughs> you have to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, that's what's it's up, different, man. Different, you got that goofy right. fucker behind you, you know, to keep you company, you know. Mark, I know you fucking you walked Mark's out of the woods a couple years ago. <laughs> I just say whatever comes to mind. Sometimes it's good. It's usually not. Yeah. So Marks, I can I know you're a big ICP guy. Uh before that, uh like what kind of music did you listen to? Like uh were you just like into hip hop and then ICP, then hardcore? How'd your ICP, it's weird. That came like after I was in the hardcore. <laughs> no shit. Yeah. Yeah. When I was real young, I would listen to mainly rap and then weird enough, I heard Queen. That was like the first guitar music I ever heard. And I just went deep listening to any kind of rock music. And then a uh, guy I worked with or went to school with, he had an older brother, metalhead guy, he showed me like Canwell Corpse, a bunch of weird death metal stuff, but he loved Bad Luck 13. They're like a Philly hardcore band that played with a lot of metal guys. And I was seeing them with like cattle decapitation, shit like that. And then um, he showed me Mad Ball, H2O. And then he took me to see Bad Luck in a basement. And I just like, it's all packed in. People are throwing beers at you. I got slammed into a fucking um, pipe in the basement. My nose was like leaking. Oh. Yeah, came into high school the next day. Just like the coolest guy in there. You know, everyone wanted to know what was good. <laughs> yeah, there was no going back after that. Yeah, man. Um, uh, that's cool. It's, uh, it's funny you find like ICP after and uh like were you into wrestling before that? Because like when you see like bad luck, you probably you know this like related wrestling, to that. Were you always into wrestling or not? Nah? It all came from my buddy Ant. Yeah, he's a juggalo, he loves hardcore metal. He wrestles himself. That's what's up. Yeah, they got some wild back yeah, wrestling yeah. shit, man. I tell you. Yeah, I met Kareem not too long after he He's a big part of getting me into this stuff. I'm just like watching dudes get lit on fire and thrown <laughs> off a table. And, you know, I went to you know, like I, this is a, like I then drove the car over it and got stuck because chicken wire. I couldn't reverse. I got in park. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got in park to the backyard of the wrestling spot. 
checking this shit out and like I go to reverse and there's chicken wire preventing me from reverse. And I was like, I was really at the wrestling function, you know? <laughs> that, That's hilarious. Uh, you gotta show they, them get, they get down though. They um hit people with mailboxes, unorthodox just behavior, but they all they all have a good time. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, dude. Um they just did a, a live recording here in Detroit, the fucking JCW a couple weeks ago. that I don't know if it was out yet, but uh I know they recorded the whole thing. I didn't go. I had free tickets and I uh I didn't go. It was my wife's birthday, so I said I got better things to do. Yeah, oh, bro, yeah I, I got to see JCW live at the Juggalo Gathering. I don't know how a regular show is, but at the gathering there's people like just throwing food at the wrestlers. <laughs> it's a kind of disgusting place, but there's some of the cra- up for it. craziest yeah, lineups at them at the gathering thing, so like oh uh, yeah, here I went. KRS one played Slick Rick. Who who does Baby Got Back? Sir Mix a lot. Sir Mix a lot played, yeah. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. Hey, you let's tell the people how uh, me and you uh fucking met Marks. Do you remember where we were? Oh yeah, the black and blue ball in New York. Oh, fuck yeah. yeah. Yeah, Marauder played All Out War, Pain of Truth. Um, Bulldog, man, and Robert, Death and Threat, Bonzo, Bra- nice, uh, New York Weed. Oh, yeah. yeah. Naysayer played. That was a fucking badass B&B ball. And it was just, I'm just so happened to be if I sitting down, you know, resting my lower back a little bit, and you're sitting next to me. Yeah, fuck and you. Then, yeah, yeah, man, we just started fucking chatting a little bit. And, uh, you know, I asked about where you're from. You said Philly and where you're staying, whatever. You're like, oh, I just slept I in fucking where. Tompkins Square Park. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yo. I slept a couple places. Yeah, he tells us, he's like, yeah, <laughs> I'm going, fuck you. And we're just like, all right. He's like, yeah, I'm going to like just walk around New York. I'm like, he's like, yeah, I'll like loiter of different vestibules, hotels. I'll do whatever I need to do to kill time, but I'm going. Like, and I'm just like, relate. Really? Fuck yeah, get that shit. <laughs> and like, I'm paying for a hotel in New York City. Yeah, the wild man, and wildly nothing. expensive. I was in a hotel lobby though. I got to charge my phone. I had some soap on me. Went in the sink. Got a little, little makeshift shower going on. Hey man, you gotta do what you got. That's some real hardcore punk rock shit. Fuck what you heard, man. That's what's yeah. up. Like that's like any of these kids these days. Nobody's gonna do that. I'm you're just, like you're. I'm just being frugal. Yeah. You know? What's up with bands getting hotels on tour and DIY? And you better talk to somebody at the venue, crash somewhere, make it happen. Like, you know, look, look. There's more ways to make it happen, Kevin. But like, <laughs> I remember we were in Rhode Island and there was another show going on that night. But just being like honest and just be like yo if anybody got a spot to go do like yo we got practice space it ain't much but like i'm like well couches. it was on the side of like the the highway which is pretty dope and <laughs> there was a couple couches and you know we made it yeah is that yo <laughs> look man it's a spot to fucking you know, sleep for, for for at least a couple hours man mm-hmm. you know one eye open right on you know not <laughs> one eye open yeah couple stayed in the van you know how it'd be I woke up in the van that someone told us we couldn't park there. <laughs> oh, none shit. Of you we're inside, we're awake yet, so we're just, fuck, got to get out of here. I need coffee that morning. That's right. <laughs> and you got to be like Mikey Hood. You know, he fucking sleeps with a sawed-off shotgun in the van. Yeah. Ain't yeah, no way. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, first you need a van. Shit. <laughs> um. So how'd you guys uh obviously going to shows and shit, but ended up linking up with like Joe Hardcore and getting on the fest? How did that go about? Just you guys just like supporting doing the thing you're supposed to do in hardcore and he just well, reached out. First I um got down on my knees and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that's fucking yeah, you know, <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh so uh that that's fucking hilarious. But Joe uh I've been going to shows and there was like some some weird obscurity with like this whole one side of the fence and another with metalcore and hardcore. And for me, my my family heard me listening to whatever and they all called it white people music and they hated it. So I got bitched at for listening to whatever, whether it be spaz or, you know, um, like any uh, like like some Oceano shit that I'd be going to see back in the day. Um, like I declare wars on my wall. I own that shit. But like. 
So like back amongst those times, like I would be going to hardcore shows. Like I remember backtrack coming oh, yeah. and I was just like, I gotta go. That was another time where I finessed it and said like, that one was one where everything went smooth. I'm like, all right, I can get out and go, you know, back, boom, boom. But they played and um, I just, I just remember like having the craziest asthma, like just wheezing situation. Like I was just drawing, so I would step out and like Joe walks up and like just is like, yeah, you good? I'm like, I'm like, yeah, like I'm all right. And he's just like looking at me. And like I just like walked back, but I always from that period like had a couple motherfuckers I knew just looking out for me off that alone because they're just like yo this fucking dude doing like kempo karate kicks in the pit just stamina the fuck like when does he chill out I bet some people think that I do but I feel it when I get in the crib definitely <laughs> <laughs> we all do yeah like, there ain't no tough guy in that it's just I um had like conditioned stamina with that shit from being on the mat for eleven years. But um, backtrack, asthma problem, Joe, you from Frankfurt? Yeah. I got, like, one day I was a hardcore pride weekend, and, like, I ain't eating all day. I came from work, and he had some Chinese food, and just, I'm walking in, and he just, like, hands it to me. He's like, Frankfurt looks out for Frankfurt. And that's just some real shit, because we ain't asking for much, and we never had it. So we just, you know. If you don't stand for something, you're going to fall for anything. And I respect the fuck out of that, man. Like, he's always giving me, like, random wisdom when I wasn't looking for it, being a knucklehead and had to think back. Like, I had some issues where, like, I had some, like, stuff with family and, like, I was, like, talking and, like, he just told me what I needed to hear. And, like, on some real shit, like, I was already thinking, like, all right, like, I don't know, around, like, 23 like, I got my shit made up. I know what the fuck I'm doing. Like, you know, I've been doing this since 17, like stuck in, slap me back real quick. And I was just like, you know, well, you know, when you start realizing that like certain things happen for reasons and the people you meet, you shouldn't take for granted. Kind of, it's really slow my pace and slow my role. So I watch, you know, I try to keep the company. I keep like genuine and like, he's always been just like making sure for health reasons, like, same with John. Like, I think it was an Acacia Strange show at the church. And uh, he tore his ACL. I witnessed that. Joe's telling him to leave, and he's like, no. Like, and, like, we're, the, we're probably the kids that he's told talked about. Like, uh, there's these people who get these black eyes and stuff, and they just don't want to leave. Yeah, that, that, all right, that shout out. Like, we, we're here for a good fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, well, that's cool. You know, Frankfurt looks out for Frankfurt, and... uh you know, little would anybody even think in the past, you know, 20 years that <laughs> dude, Joe's a I, wise it, man, dude. Like, he's fucking smart. He is philosophical. Like, his long form answers and responses to things are so, like, like, I don't know, man. There's just like, so much wisdom in the guy he's seen and done so much, whether you like him or not. You know, people have their own whatever the fuck. But, like it's like shit. I mean, you listen to what he says. Like preach, Joe. Like shit he says is like it's fucking gospel. Sometimes it sounds weird to say, but some shit he says if it resonates with me hard, and that's, that's cool that you know he got a hold of you, you know, and uh, could give you any sort of words of wisdom and he feed you when he could and shit like that. That's fucking cool. I got a lot. I got a lot of like OGs like that. Like shout out to uh, here we go again. Uh, got a lot of OGs like that. Like shout out like. Jay, shout out my my boy Don and uh and Joe, like and a few others, like they just like if I'm telling them something, like because I'm a vocal person when I'm like stressed out going through something, they can tell and like it was going on. Like I'll I'll voice it, but they'll be like, that's dumb. <laughs> and I've never claimed to be smart, but like that's dumb. That's what you shouldn't do. But like most people will be like, you know, just just figure it out. I'm here if you need anything. But Joe would be beyond that and would be like, you know, that's dumb. You really like just stop smoking so much weed and work harder and get your shit on point. I was a young kid, so like stuff like that. He tried to be like, yeah, you should just get get real busy with like even when what even with shout out. We went to a show and like handing out flyers at the end of uh oh that life's question life's show. question show at the church and uh he just goes, yo, is this fucking serious? Like yeah, and he just takes it and walks away and right he wrote some shit on it with his thumb, put it up, and, like, right there, like, from day one before anything, like, I think he had the demo in his email. He was just like, 
I don't even think he listened to it. He just looked at me and said, was I serious? I was like, yeah. He's like, I support you. Like, yeah, my back from day one. I'm like, <laughs> shout out to Aaron, too, from Jesus Peace, because I, I, gave, I gave him a paper, and <laughs> I was just like, you guys need to save the fucking trees, because we had these big-ass slips, like, with the small-ass print in our band camp. You know, I don't know how to print on multiple grid. Like, I have uh, like, yeah, that's, that's a bad shit right there. That's, save the trees, baby. But absolutely. So um took some lessons, got smaller ones printed and some smaller stickers. And you know, we just kept going to shows and like we did like we had like a studio that we just had monthly and we just practiced and did like DIY demos with a batshit crazy landlord who had a lot of gear and like we didn't know why it was batshit crazy and I ain't gonna speak for it, but probably a lot of it was hot, hot stuff. So when we came in there to do the demo and had my my boy Andrew with the behind the scene trying to pull the trigger on some shots. This dude's like, we're like three songs in and he's not, this dude's not feeling the vibe. And he's like, you guys got to finish this or go. So like, that's why we just, we like this shit one take, like most, like nothing to lose is like straight up once one takes that almost. Wow. Like we set up, set up shop, recorded live drums. Everything was recorded live, but straight up, we got them in a 16 bit format. So <laughs> it's like, New wasn't playing around. We got it on a burner CD, no flash drive. Everybody's getting iCloud drops. Like, you know, like we just did it real quick in there on a, a task cam. Uh, and after that, we went to cart music for the most recent stuff we did. But yeah, working with that guy was a piece of work because you never know if he was going to ask to smoke your weed or yell at you for having it. What? But, yeah, man. Like, Lance was wild and like some of the Philly music people might know. Like, <laughs> he always thought someone was watching him, basically. Oh yeah. Nice. He definitely we practice there whenever we want. We pay rent and a lot of us would work late. And I was in kitchen industry working downtown making pizzas, where I was always in some different sort of pizza shop. So um get out late. All right, let's let's practice. That's what we do. So sometimes we get like, why right, what are you guys doing? He definitely was just like curious but once he re he got behind the stuff of recording us like i saw like so much gear there and i was like holy shit dude this is awesome like we got to like pick and select what we wanted to use and like still mostly basically use what we had but he it wasn't the, the the worst but it wasn't the by by all means we were able to press record and get it done and that's what we came here to fucking do at the end of the day so. that's what you gotta do fuck it <laughs> What's up, Mark's back there looking all crazy. Look, you're about to fall asleep. Uh, you know, we had a couple bong rips before uh, <laughs> doing the Terror Zone podcast here. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, you got to do bong rips. Got to. Yeah, uh, we got a crazy heat wave going on right hot. now. Yeah, dude, it was fucked up over here the past few days, man. It was like real hot. So maybe we sent it your way. It kind of cooled down a little bit in Detroit. <laughs> Um yeah, no, we, we, we 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 feeling it. We feeling it. Yeah. Uh I was just we uh were in Delaware and then Jersey this past weekend for the most part. I was to say the least. I know you you had a different kind of pool. I had sent a picture to the chat of me in a pool for once for the first time this summer. And he's got the funniest lines like, I got a pool for you, a pool of sweat because he's busting his ass at work. <laughs> <laughs> it was I think it was ninety-eight degrees the other day. I have the worst hours too, ten to five, so it's just beaming the whole shift. Yeah, it's fucking you up, pushing them. Yeah, the cars ain't gonna push themselves. So. <laughs> I'm grab my bait pen. <laughs> oh fuck yeah, we're gonna pass it around then. Uh, can you hear us, all right? Because we switched to the AirPods. Yeah, I hear you just fine. Can you hear me? Sorry. I hear you. Do you hear me? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so now, I don't even know where we were. Talking about this yeah, is hard. Or no, we're talking yeah. about uh, Philly hardcore and shit, I think. We're pushing carts and the heat. I don't remember. <laughs> Sounds about right. Fuck, maybe this wax will help. It will help me remember. The weed will help me remember, though. Yeah, yesterday it was 710, and I didn't even realize it. I didn't even care, but like, totally practiced. And I know, man. There's a bunch like... of deals going on over here, and I didn't even. Uh, I didn't even go to the dispensary because I was so fucking busy. Like, I'm saying. Yeah, they have like eighths of wax for like for like thirty dollars. 
dude. But yeah, it's blessed over there. It's so nice. <laughs> it is so nice. I know, man. When you guys came to fucking Detroit, uh, we didn't really talk about it. Did you guys get any uh, any fun yeah. shit at the dispensaries? Oh. Uh, I know we smoked something, but I was so fucking high at uh, tied down. Sugar, I remember. Sugar Mama show Mark some love. What'd you get, Cat? Uh, no, what'd you get? It was like a gram. Oh yeah, it was, yeah, it was a strainer. It was called Whip It. That's Whip like It. Why I got it. Well, it was like five bucks a gram, maybe. She gives me like three, maybe an eighth. Yeah, like so y'all. She's like, she waited around and she's like, the fuck it. Oh yeah, got a, I got a couple cartridges and some flour. We were, we were cooking, we were steamrolling. Like that's what heals. That's what heals in between some of the like the thick ass, you know, no warning and brace war stats and to tomorrow. Like that's just a, you know. Just standard need that yeah so y'all shouts to y'all for real for having like gas ass cush for the low for sure for sure it's crazy <laughs> no it's crazy how uh, like prices like it's kind of sad because a, a, a lot of my old friends who used to sell weed like they can't even uh they can't even stay in business because the, the f- dispensary's got it so cheap like i'm trying to support my friends here but it's like, I, don't know. Why? I don't know why i do that Dude, if you sleep, if you wait too long, I'm just gonna go to the store. Like, yeah, right. I know. I mean, you want to bullshit me? I can run fucking you know, right down the street and you know <laughs> get something to hold me over till tomorrow, and you're gonna lose out. <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was great service, and I was down in not Detroit, but one other time I was in Flint, Michigan, mm-hmm. and ended up driving all the way from there to Patterson, New Jersey. I was playing in this all band with some good friends of mine, Regrown, and uh play guitar for them at the time and oh man like we went to flint and it was the last show on the bill that nine hour drive back i'll tell you just having that the the michigan pack it just was was a special drive home like (laughs) they were like hey we should sleep and go back the next day i'm like you know looked at my boy angel and i'm like yo they're taking taking this drive home (laughs) you know what i mean like no traffic them overnight man that's what's up, man. Um, what did you guys think of uh, the whole tied down experience compared to like you know a lot of the other like, big shows that you have? You're fortunate to be right by this is hardcore. Would it? Would you say it's a good contender with the uh, with TIAC, the hometown fest? So we can speak yeah. on this. <laughs> yo, yo, I'm gonna just say off rip, yo. The two day wristband thing is immaculate. <laughs> Like it just saves down, saves saves down time because, let's say being there on time or which is late, you know, for a festival, which you know, but we were you know traveling. I think what we just stopped in the dispo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah the first two bands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so ended up missing ankle biter. Uh, yeah, a lot of people and um, dude, Sunday we walked right in. It was pretty gas. <laughs> <laughs> like no I got to see the sissy boys crazy ass set. Uh it was yeah. wild. Yeah, dude. I love um, that fucking band. Really I'm... stoked for Bad Beat because um I was like it sounds like shit that makes me want to skate my dick off and I'm like, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> like, uh... it and then uh crazy. lyrically, like definitely like huge fuck you vibes. I love it. Um the hell, man, like brace war, no warning, that pre show alone. I wasn't even expect. I was. I was going. I, I came down in time on a whim. I said, "Yo, Mark, when your flight back?" He said, "I got the late flight back." I'm like, "All right, you know, get this Airbnb situated, and um, I'm gonna fucking just like go with you and hope for the best." And shout out Greg, because <laughs> <laughs> I I walk in. I I go up the stairs from that pizza parlor joint, and yeah. I'm standing down there for a minute. And Haywire playing, and I'm just like, yeah, no, nah, I got to get active. And so uh, I wanted to see them and uh, ran right upstairs. And, like, I, Greg found me while I found him. And, like, he just said, yo, glad you're here. And I'm like, yo, like, so, you know, like, I sold out. I, I, I got the, I, I give you money. He's like, dude, glad you're here. None of that. Shut the fuck up. Just, like, straight to business. Like, already sold out. Already on. Uh, so, yeah, you know, huge shouts to. Look, man, 
Like you said, you know, like uh, the hardcore looks out for hardcore. And when you see someone from, you know, East Coast, at least, you know, he's always at the Philly shows. You go to fucking New Jersey. So, you know, same same area. It's cool that uh, you're like, yeah, no doubt. Like, say no more. You're in. You know, that's, oh, that's really yeah, cool. No. Yeah, no, it was big, big love over there. Big love. So I think like it was like that that pre-show, like that ceremony show, that, that was like really great and i i felt like i'm like dude all right now that that like what's what's saturday like what's sunday like what what we're gonna like am i gonna dance like am i gonna like be able to fucking like do me and like everyone was real welcoming and like it was just like really dope to fucking i (laughs) jump up at fool's game and my friends and just have a fucking ball with them real quick like you know we just got active like that dom set was crazy uh the weekend was not like yeah, it. Yeah, man. It, like, like, even if for it's like the third year here, it's still like, what the fuck? Like, I can't believe this is just like 15 minutes from my house. Like, it's it's unreal at it how is, fun yeah. it is and, and how cool everybody is, just the whole entire vibe. It's like, you know, like yeah, sometimes bro, it feels like it's a little dark in the room, especially when you got like 100 demons and laid to rest, you know, shit. The, the, the red light during the 100 demons cause. It's scary. <laughs> <laughs> You'll make you feel like you're in hell, man. Like, what the fuck? Dude, dude. I've seen a lot of the bands on there before, and like, everyone just had like 10 times better stuff. Like, so. Seeing Never Ending Game in Philly and seeing them there in Detroit, naturally, which was expected, I'm telling you. But, like, I still thought I was going to be able to, like, you know, get it pop. No, look, listen, I was a launch pad. I was a stepping Yo, That was everything to do from COA landed on me. And I said, this is gas. Like, you know, like, it was having a good time with everybody. I just, like, you want to talk about unity, like, that that shit right there. <laughs> and the D was, it was sturdy because a lot of people don't be coming up front. There's horseshoe dancers. And right now everybody's, like, trying to, like, be hard and, like, yeah, you just have you know get get it popping up front like so there's like a few rows of space before you have a crowd and then have heart oh my god and like youth of today and like just having that type of launch pad of, of space of carefree stage diving that's the type of shit i watch at home and like it's typically a west coast show if i'm being real with you dog but the fact that y'all got it right listen philly if you tapped in Move the fuck up, bro. Get like Move the you're fuck not gonna up. get that. I've been fucking, screaming at every come fucking on. Show. Nobody gets nobody gets it. Oh, come on. You all here for the same shit. You really trying to smell dudes dangerous in front of you? Come on, just move up. <laughs> you listen to Scott Vogel. Come on. <laughs> Jim on. Yeah, he's gotta move up. Yeah, watching tear there. I'm just <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a beautiful yeah, was thing. Awesome. I mean, like terror there, like, like it's crazy. These are band- like, uh... yeah, these are bands that I would see at home, and like it's a different atmosphere over there, obviously. But I wasn't expecting it. Like I've seen it on videos, but like it's different when you're in the middle of the fucking crowd, and or different when you're trying to get active or something. Like it's just it's awesome. Like. uh I don't think for a second I was like, fuck, I got to, like, hide my bag somewhere. Like, I felt like I was, like, 17 sneaking away at these festivals again. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, it's cool because it can bring it out in everybody. It doesn't matter how old you are. Like, oh, facts. Like, I like, got 36, and, like, you know, you give you goosebumps, you know, just watching the band play, see everybody go fucking nuts, and then see all the people just, like, standing on the stage, like, all the people, like, uh, you know, whatever dude from fucking Trapped Under Ice and got Dan Seely and uh, what's his name from God's Hate and fucking that comedian, like all these people from all these different parts of the country. And it's just like, what the fuck is this, man? And everybody is just as cool as you think they would be. You know, like, nobody, Dog, like, for, like nobody's exactly. really too too cool to talk to you or, or give you a high five too, or if I help too you. Too cool you know, to talk to you or station. give you a high five? How about I'm standing there, baked out of my mind, and then it's playing and, like, I I like the dance and it looks like I like the attention, but really like being talked to in the middle of a band set is pretty fucking. I was like, fuck, I'm big. I don't know anybody here besides like four fucking feet, five fucking people. And the kid was like, the kid was like, yo, shout out Philly in the building. Dash me up. 
kill. That's my nigga. That's fucking what's up. Because like he ain't have to go like man playing and saying he's like that's Philly. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, man. He recognized her. Oh, we wearing a hat, or did he just know you from? Let's see, know you from Philly. I like. Uh, I went to Chicago uh, to see Bulldoze, and I was uh, there too. You, I didn't know you were there. Yeah, dude, at that uh, subterranean. Was it the subterranean? It was a yeah. checkered floor. Yeah, it was holding my own release show. Yeah. Yes, 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 dude. With volcano and all, and was, that show was awesome. Yeah, yeah, and fucking uh, out of pocket, and then. Uh, yep, yep. Shout out out of pocket, definitely. Yeah, I'm not even yeah. trying to say that other band, CDO something. I don't know the last word. It's a uh, Spanish shit. I don't like. I'm not gonna fuck it up. I try to say Listen, it. So I didn't even try. I don't know, but uh, did Innervate play that or no? Yeah, yeah, Innervate played too. Yeah. Fuck yeah, they were dope. They the band I got in for, and I'll say I stepped right in and got warmed up, and I was like, I was, you know, it's cold. I was like, all right, dude, I've seen this fucking video. And I was like, shout out Anji because like walked in. Like they see me, like I just again another instance where, like me and my roommate were just like, dude, let's go to Chicago. And it is a week before FYA, so I'm like doing the same match thing, doing my doing my like what I can make shit happen. Like I, right, I'm gonna make make some make some good shit out of this. So we went for that weekend. Not that we were tourists, but I wanted to see some horror movie attractions. So like we got to have like. That entire weekend, the show was like, what was it? All? It was over the weekend, so we went up like a day early and stayed a day later, and got to kick it a little bit. So it was dope to take in Chicago. I've never fucking been there. And Child's Play, there's some some bitch who fell out of like a twelve story window, like on some like, you know, in a scene. She was Andy's babysitter, and like saw that John. There's a Seven Eleven below it. I walk in, I ask the guy, I'm like, dude, you know what this building is? He's like, Seven Eleven. I'm like. You know shit, but you know what this building is? He's like, I'm like, all right, all right, have a good one. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Um, I didn't realize that, but uh, last year when I went to uh, Chicago, the only thing I went and seen was the um uh, the Shameless House. I went and drove over and seen that shit. You know, you ever watch Shameless? Yeah, yeah, that that that, that that's a dysfunctional ass family. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But just to see the that house bitch. in person was cool as fuck. Cause you know how much crazy shit happened, you know, on that street or outside that house, man. It's like, oh, yeah, for real. I wanted to go see the Home Alone joint because Macaulay Culkin was king. Like, hit hit the lick and he held it down. Like, who the fuck gets forgotten about at home and like really just like finagles the shadows and shit? Like, come on, so. <laughs> Oh, like the the paint, like you know, booby trap city, like you know, if not like like I don't know, I don't got beef with people. I'm vegetarian, but if I did have ops, I'm telling you, like Macaulay Culkin type shit is what I'm on. So don't play, <laughs> <laughs> dude. And it's funny because I drove to Chicago that day for that fucking Bulldo show. I drove there that day and drove back right after the show, man. The four and a half hours yeah. there. It, it was, was cold. Six hours the, next, back. the next morning, I go to the rental, and the shit's for. Um, we think it's a rental. We think it's our rental at least. And the door's frozen. Handle's frozen. Not open. Turns out that's not our car. It's another car. The same car just next to ours. And me and my boy are like fuck. So we we get the R John, and it's still frozen, but not as frozen. So we were able to get in and thaw ourselves, and you know make our way to the airport and shit. But uh. We did. We we had some some good like glizzies and shit over there. I don't know if they call them that respectfully. Uh, I wouldn't even excuse me go too far as to calling them that. But <laughs> I'm not a big hot dog guy, but my boy is. So we went and stopped at their uh, Porta. Don't don't get me to lying, man. It was it was good though. <laughs> Portelios. I hope I ain't fuck it up. Long uh, I think it's just Portillos, but close. All right, okay, I fucked it up, you know. Yeah, so, uh, uh yeah, there's one here in Michigan. I've never even had it. I've been to Chicago a few times. I fuck with hot. I like a good hot dog, but I never even had I it. Mean, yeah, you know, I don't. There, I don't really eat like ballpark hot dogs or cookies, but I didn't know they put the, the pickle on it. Yeah, if they got, if they got some stuff on there, but usually hot dogs. Like, you know, so yeah, yeah, you know. All right, all right. The, the celery fuck. salt. I fuck with pickle. a good burger. Little fucking yeah. little like a little that, that, pig, that 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 pickle was a game changer. It was, <laughs> it was, it was I think a tomato good. on it too. On a Chicago dog. Most chicken sandwiches 
Oh, man. <laughs> what's like a Philly staple food? Like, what's uh, what comes out? Of, oh, duh, Philly cheesesteak. Besides that, what the fuck? Besides that, and one, like, yeah, like, that depends. Like, this whole whiz wit shit for the tourists, not really. Like, I'm not that guy. I got mine from, like, delis that had bulletproof glass. And, like, <laughs> if you were nice enough to pop, he might let you come back and, like, chop it up your damn self because he wants to smoke a cigarette. He knows you ain't going to be on no fuck shit. Shout out Griscom. Shout out Leaper Street. Shout out Dyer Street. Um, that's where I learned how to use a stovetop because my mom didn't really want me cooking in the house because at five years old, I burned a bowl of ramen and noodles because I forgot to put water in the microwave. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, look, look, dude, my daughter did that like f- two months ago. She's 10. Yo, it turns out way worse than you would ever think. For dude, my whole, I just so threw my minuscule. microwave away. Yeah, yeah. Yo, it smells really bad forever, bro. Like, my, yo, I got to, that was the ass whooping, man. Yeah, uh, I just oh, put my God. microwave in the garbage, yo. Dude, yeah, bro, I just forgot some water. Damn, now like, there's no coming back from this. Fuck the whole house up for like two weeks. <laughs> yo, yo, you got an X on the way out. It's not nah, okay. <laughs> um, Shout out to yeah. people who forget to put water in the ramen. Or like, well, so um, for a good staple food, though, for Philly, though, like this whole there's a whiz wit concept. And I'm like a Cooper Sharp or an American with my cheesesteak, maybe provolone. But that's what I'm a more of a provolone. Leave me alone unless it's with the Italian. Like so, so. <laughs> we got hoagies over here. A lot of them places call them sub. But uh, Wawa's big here. And uh, I'm an honorary now. You know, after Sam Mash closed, there's one right at Hop Skip and jump for me. I'm over there now, uh, making hoagies and shit. So the Philly staples, though, I got to give it to, like, my top three would be, like, Gooey Louie's, just because as a kid, my uncle used to take me there. And ever since he, like, you know, he, he just disappeared. That's another cool story. I ain't going to you know, drag ear off of it, but my uncle straight disappeared. He's, he's super cool, though. Gooey Louie's, though, Special Forces Green Beret. He decided he didn't want to be with my aunt anymore. And, um. I've been kind of trying to like track him, but like he's real, he's real, he's real smart. <laughs> maybe he'll hear this. Yo, I don't know. Maybe yo, he's Uncle watching Mark, you. If you're out there, yeah. if you're out there, Uncle Mark. Meet me at Gooey Louie's when the Phils win. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you that Derek Jeter is not him right now. <laughs> We're going right in now. A different right direction. Right now. Right now. Nah, but uh, and no, nah, no, nah, no way, no shot he is. But uh. Gooey Louie's is a, is a top staple, and I got to give it to Steve's and then Ishka Bibble. There's no Geno's or Pat's in that equation for me. But, like, above all of those, it's going to be the corner store deli cheesesteak. That's what's up. And, like, um, you got to get the water ice while you're there, too. <laughs> hey, are you guys ever figure out if you're going to uh, go to that uh, New Jersey show, uh, E-Town and fucking Bulldoze end it? You guys gonna try to make it out to the, how far is oh, that? Wow. You guys like pretty good. Uh, that's pretty dope. I like it. I work overnight, so I'm at like at nachos. <laughs> pretty gas. I just like uh typically depending on like if I have well I was like Call of Duty Warzone, they have like tons of soldiers to drag in. So if I put a shift up for advertising, I remember one show like last minute I wanted to go to Sunday this weekend. I was like, fuck, I want to I wanna go to this. I advertised my shift, too, within 10 minutes. That shit got snatched. I was like, this, this is dope. And just as much as that's the case, when I need extra cash flow, I can go and pull shifts from, shout out Wawa, I can go grab shifts from other stores or I can go grab shifts and, you know, make sure I have my 40 or a little of tea. You know, go get your bag. Go get your fucking bag. They got stock, yo. Listen. Shout out Wawa. <laughs> I can't speak on the food, but... No, I, I can't hear you, Mark. I can't hear you. I can't speak on the food, but it's a real convenient place to do. Yeah. Um, so are you guys... I wouldn't go there for cheese. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I, I'm going to try to, yeah. honestly. My car stays in the city right now. Oh, okay. Now, you got to so. keep it local. So that, that, that's for what it is right now. So, uh... <laughs> yeah, that venue... It's a little big, you know. I think they have a barricade there. Not at Salty's either, right? 
Starland. No, it Where said uh, the Starland Dane Ballroom. Starland. Oh, that's a that's a mission. That's yeah, a grip. As a mission, that's a grip. That's a hike. Um, my my car can't do that. But yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> I don't know. I might have to see what's up. You know. Because yeah, I was thinking about because I'm uh I'm driving there and I was thinking which way should I go? Should I go to New York City or should I go to Philly for the day? Because I'm driving in uh a Wednesday night, so I'll be there like Thursday afternoon. So I don't know where I'm gonna spend my time. Because I'm sure as fuck not spending it in the middle of New Jersey. Got to go to Philly or. NYC. Okay. Yeah, respectfully, it's, it's hot right now. It's a little cool over there. And like I found some nice little little shade over there. It was like about ten degrees cooler over there this weekend. But I feel you. I, I'd rather. That's a smarter move for sure. Uh, plus, if you're already gonna be there for the show, I'm not gonna be biased and say swing here. It would better, but <laughs> no, you'll definitely find some cool shit to do. Get into. Get some good food if you go check out one of those three places I told you. Gooey Louie's is still open, I'm pretty sure. Uh, you got uh, Ishka Bibbles and Steve. If you come, if if you come pick me up, I'll take you down to Frankfurt and we can go get one. Frankfurt, pretty gas. Well, is that the is that near Kensington or the opposite way? <laughs> listen, listen. Uh, you, like it's a, not too far. A few stops on the L way. Ugh. You know that's another thing too. Like I don't know why I didn't say this before, but like to hear that there was like hardcore going around in my hood, like from Joe and from like OGs. Not that it baffled me because I know that it was a mixed neighborhood. Okay. But I grew up in that area between, like, 03 and 2014. And, like, I'm going to just say that, like, I had a lot of, like, like just active gang stuff in my close, close, close proximity. Might be, like, two two floors below me or might be a little down, might be a little further down the street, whatever, regardless. Uh, I always assumed it to be, like, a heavy, hard, do-rag rap just sort of like it was like a it was just a trench for real it wasn't always like that like when I was going to preschool but towards like second or third grade I already noticed like playing with wrestlers outside of my friends and like being told to go inside because like they know what's about to start happening you know shit's getting let off this that and forth so um that was then it kind of painted the picture like you know like you could like Rest in peace, Kenyatta. You can literally lose somebody walking to the store. Like, it is it is crazy back then. Like, in that time period. And that was, like, older. And now, a lot of the shit in Philly is, like, is like 14 to 17. And, like, that shit is just boggling my mind. Because I was, I was playing. That shit is dumb. Like, I was playing video games and, like, Guitar Hero and skateboarding and... Doing everything that at the time my parents called like white people shit. Now like we got a good algorithm of like, you know, that shit ain't that. It's just what I like. To, what I like to do. <laughs> but um, yo, so around that time period, like that was just what the neighborhood was like. So like I kind of was just like didn't know that he, to hear that there's motherfuckers riding the L with bats, all going down to the same shows together. To know that motherfuckers are like that deep, holding shit down, like. Whenever I took the L down the show, I have my phones down by myself. And, like, I've seen, like, people fight, whatever. I'm on my business. You know, stay ten toes down. Never had any issues. That's most of Philly. It gets this crazy weird rep because of some dumb, stupid imitation of Chicago drill rap with, like, talking about people that you've killed or pretended to kill that don't exist. Yeah, that's a thing. Uh, It's just... That sort of shit just brings like this whole crazy like side to uh what what it is. But most of the time, nine out of ten, you're good if you just mind your business, go where you gotta go, stop lingering. I was taught like go from point A to point B. Like why are you why are you sitting here lingering somewhere? Like I, my uncle would always tell me like that's another reason why I brought him up because he always gave me a lot of good life advice. So if he were able to see any of this, it would be kind of fucking funny. But like don't be a gnat at a barbecue. And I never knew what it meant until, like, sitting there at a barbecue and I got a gnat on my rib. I'm like, dude, that shit. Like, why are you lingering somewhere you don't need it to be, you know? Up off of that plate, you know? Get to it. 
Yeah, man, that's a good uh that's a good analogy right there. I like that one. They walking <laughs> home from Don't karate watching my shadow. I'd be playing a game just watching my shadow because you'd have people walking behind you and you never knew what they were on. So shout out Ender for head on a swivel because that's something where you just always had to have is second nature because you hear keys jingling, you can tell how many footsteps you you know, I know how many people were ready to size me up or whatever for like whatever at the time of what was happening, man. Listen, like there is street sense and you know, street smarts and uh Frankfurt is a definitely a area where it's like needed as a kid. And I was sent to a school that was like four blocks from me. And I had one kid that he was white and uh we me and him were close friends and we would always like go together, but people would fuck with him because he was white. And to be honest, he was better at basketball than me, funny enough. Shout out Mike Vick on us all. So, and his name is Mike Vick. Come on, bro. Like, <laughs> come the fuck on. Like, they get mad at me over here. And, like, he's, like, doing track, one of the fastest motherfuckers. And, like, we would, like, race to school on some young bullshit from, like, kindergarten to, like, third grade. And then one day, it's like, yeah, like, I'm not, I'm not for this anymore, man. Like, Things. We're not ready for like, one on one. Like I'm like, all right. So what are we doing? He's like, I'm beating this kid the fuck up. Like I'm tired of this shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> like I'm sitting there. Like I got like my aunt sent me to school with the glasses with the granny strings on them. This is why I got into karate and why I'm the way I am now because motherfuckers did try to test the motherfucker like that. There was the guy who wanted to turn them glasses on the contact. So like. Yeah, it was like my first friend, him and this guy, Johnny, who looked like Riley from the Boondocks. We would just have each other's back at school, and, like, we were all short. Like, I'm, like, like 5'9 now. If that, I was, like, my mom is 4'11", so I was a little smaller than that at that time. Like, motherfuckers go to our schools. They're, like, already, like, 5'8". I'm, like, damn, bro, like, chill out, bro. We, we ain't even there yet. <laughs> but, like, up, it was just, like, you needed to, like, if you showed you were a pussy, you were just going to get clowned for eternity for that shit. So, like, we just always had each other's backs. And, like, when Mike said he was going to fight this guy, and uh, I remember his name. If he sees this fucking, his name Jonathan Adorno. Uh, said he's going to fight this guy because, you know, he keeps calling him, like, a cracker and he keeps punching on him. And I'm just like, dude, fuck that. Fuck that guy. Like, you ain't got it, you know? We just, I don't remember what exactly happened. But I just remember him. He said we weren't racing anymore, so I wasn't expecting to run. And he runs and ricochets off the fence and just starts beating the shit out of him during, like, the assembly line. Like, from there, at that point, I was like, yeah, that's my dog. Because that dude was already already giving me hell. And, like, he got him off everybody right then and there. He's like, listen, Mike, like, we're cutting this shit right then and there. So, like, we just were from there to, like, sixth or seventh grade scrapping, like, it's like a school where we just fought a lot. Like, just, like, even the teachers, like, there was a lot of substitutes in different schools in Edmonds. Like, it never had a consistency. Like, there's that fucking shit where it's like, oh, well, you know, you made the te- Like, I couldn't really get, you know, like, couldn't really get the proper, like, shit going on right then and there. Because there's just too much confrontation of people wanting to, you know, just, is bull, and that's just what it was. So fuck it, and now you are here. You know, oh yeah, playing. this is hardcore though. So look how your life has turned around, man. You uh, you found something you love, something you like doing, a passion. You put everything you know into it, and uh, you're living what yeah, you man, love. I, I, you I tried to, yeah, I, yeah. I tried to keep up with school while I was like going to shows and figuring out not homelessness and couch surfing. And I was like. Yeah, the three letters G D seem a lot easier and stressful <laughs> even. And um I like to say what Ricky says. I got my grade ten. That's like what my mom got an eighth grade education, so like you know, like we like but like got the grade ten, got the G D and we move we move how we move and like I'm just just here to keep it keep it pushing. I know I can work with these hands. One day I might have a food truck, one day I might not. Who knows? But Yo, that's it ain't not even do. about that. Yo, fuck yeah, man. Yo, what kind of food? Fucking barbecue. I make this badass queso. Oh, <laughs> he got the smoker. Yeah, it's a, uh, this fucking queso. This Detroit. fucking smoked queso. That's my. Uh, that's my. That's my fucking. That's gonna be it. It's gonna. It's gonna take over the world. But uh, yeah, no. 
I'll yeah, do I anything. I like good. to do fucking, uh, you know, I pulled pork, but like brisket for sure. I like sausages, like fucking smoked sausages. All right. So you. What do you say? I can't hear him. That truck is hot now. What was that place called? Oh, uh, full, full rack. Full, full rack. rack. Shout out full rack. That's a great name. <laughs> they had great brisket. Yeah, we're we're using the AirPods here. But. No, that's cool, man. He's a uh, that dude who owns that place is a hardcore kid too, so he knows what's up. He built it from the ground up. You can and... taste it in the food. Yeah, the love and passion. And uh, I think I got some of the stuff. I, I, <laughs> I can't do that. I couldn't do it, but it was my fault, you know. But like I, I unwillingly traded it to something at another vendor over there. Like I was pretty sad to see such a beautiful sandwich go away. But I did watch Mark so I could enjoy it thoroughly, and I was like, yeah. That, that was, that was, yeah, I tore that thing up. Look. well, it's like a brisket cheeseburger, I think. Woo! God damn, that's so sick. I know, man. That's what I do with the onion roll. I'll smoke a brisket, but I'll just do uh, I'll just do sliced brisket with maybe some like Gouda cheese. Then I'll put some of my smoked queso on top of it on an onion roll. But, oh, it's ridiculous. I might even toast the onion roll with some garlic butter, you know. Okay, talk to yeah. That's what that's how we come. That's right. If I were to if I were to do a food truck, it'd either be one or two ounces. I had two cousins come in our jail on so sort of like, you know, I told you I burnt the lime and leaves in the microwave, but they showed me cheat cheese earlier. I would have a cheat cheese truck. Want some shit where you could customize it and have your own different pieces. Or I probably do something along the lines of like I pull up with an oven, like in the back of the fucking truck. I, I did this for catering before, but basically making pizzas on the go out of the wood fire. I'm losing you. I can barely hear you right now. Oh. Uh oh. All right. Check, check. No, it's still the same. Very low. Very low. Right. What? Right, we might be going back to this. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Shut up. Yeah. Up. yeah. This, this is working out better. There yeah. you go. I can yeah, hear you. Check, check, check. Check, check. Testies, testies, testies. There you go. I hear you fucking goofballs. I swear to God. I turn, turn the phone up. Nah, I turned the Bluetooth off. so it'll. Yeah, yeah. Off. I hear you both way better now. Um, All right. Got to get you on the speaker one sec there. Okay. All right. Okay. Sorry. Better? Back in business. There yeah, you go. I said I would either do like a, a Chi-Chi truck because I had – Two cousins coming in out of the plant, out of the joint that were showing me different, you know, with the cheese and the cheese curls and different. I probably do like a, like a ramen truck, but it'd be like a chichi John, like, or probably do like a pull up, because I did this for catering. But you do like a wood oven connected to a truck. You okay. build the fire when you get there, and uh, you can make some pretty good pies on some stone with some. Yeah. Get like seven hundred degrees. No, everybody wants pizza. That's the way I everybody, feel. Everybody, and you can charge them like twenty two dollars for like a twelve inch pizza. <laughs> that, or just get permits for the city and go on like a college campus and like just just rape them. Start with thirty on a college campus. Just <laughs> rape them. Just put it right up their ass. <laughs> Fuck college. It's, Take them yuppie money. Fuck them. Listen, listen. You could just fucking brag in that, like. They're, they're open. You make your hours. I'm telling you. Just one place in Princeton, New Jersey. It's a sandwich joint, but they put onion rings on their sandwiches with all sorts of big back activity. And I was like, why can I get cornbread smothered? Why is it cornbread smothered collard green on a on a long roll? Woo! That shit. Yeah, listen. That shit sent me. But I'd get overcharged for that any day. Yeah, I'd pay thirty dollars for that sandwich. <laughs> no. I think it was something like eighteen. No, that's crazy. Yeah, wait, hey, man, it's uh, it's an on and popping thing right now. Food trucks are fucking everywhere around me right now, so I'm trying to. I think yeah, it's like, just expensive startup to get going. You know that. Yeah, yeah, and I've been in like restaurant industry since you know the beginning, and I've done other odd jobs and shit like run cable and stuff, but like. You know, I like I like food, so that's a passion. And Unc told me if I find a job I love, you don't really truly have to work a day in your life. But like, you know, hard work does pay off. So it's not about the job that I love right now. It's about the job that's gonna give me this paper to do what I want to fucking do. So you know, 
Don't do it. Um, you, you, you know, the whole this is hard. Can, the whole the whole this is hardcore thing is just it's it's mind blowing. And one of the biggest responsibilities I have is staying on point and not really, you know, dancing much of the weekend. Cause it's right and early. Sunday. We're gonna get in a little bit of trouble. We are. We all. Yeah. That that that's the pre warning now. But like I'm telling you, like every year, one of us gets. It's one of us. It's one like. I like something like what? <laughs> last year, John. I, I think this is I my think year. To right, get right, right now, it was you. It was you last year too. Oh uh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> well, it was an injury on my head, so I forget about it. Ah, uh, fair enough. Yeah, <laughs> someone dived on me during Gorilla Biscuits, and their shoe just got this part of my head right here, and it was gushing blood. Well, it's funny as our drummer John. He just goes, "Yo, stay still. I need this to get out of my parking ticket." Ah, <laughs> fair stop. I saved them a parking ticket. Yeah, so, hey, some work came out of it. Marks, you should shave your head like how you did for FYA when you were in that video when you took that girl's hat uh, with the pink hair or whatever color it was. Uh, That's what I said for memes' sake. I wasn't going to bring it up, but it's out. So a lot of people go like, "Oh, that's the guy that's in your band, pink hair." Fucking yes. Fuck hell, yeah. Hell yeah. You fucking picked up that girl's hat after she got fucking rocked in the nose. <laughs> people like who aren't in the hardcore like everybody's seen that they'll like ask me like why didn't you take her hat it's like people who don't go to shows they that's how they think they, they just want to like be like yeah, yeah you get to punch people like no you gotta have some common courtesy when you go in there yeah, yeah. Like, I, there, there's one of two things when like loose objects you just throw it to, off to the side Somebody who's running this shit is going to see it later and they're going to come at the And the person looking for it will come at the end or they won't come and look for it at the end. And they'll just be like, I lost my hat. And you know what? You're at an hardcore show. You're at a show. Fucking like that's a reasonable thing. I I have a whole like uh, I got mad hats, but I've also lost mad hats. Okay, like it's just the name of the game. If you're going upside down, jumping off stages and shit. That's it. Yeah, well, it's my District 9 hat. That one hurt a little bit. That does hurt. But look, we're just about out of time. Time is up on the Zoom. The time and, is um, up. And um, I was, that was a good well, way to end it with that FYA shit. I'm glad we talked about it. Um, but uh, thank you, guys. And uh, I'll put this out on, like, fucking Monday, probably. So listen to Shout Out. Support your local scenes. Support the smaller bands. Be there for yo, your thanks, friends, right? Yeah, thanks for having us. Hey, yeah, thank you. yeah, it's great to kick it with you guys, and also fun hanging out in Detroit. Yeah, that's 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 what this felt like. I mean, I was like, you just chopping it up with you. Like, I that's hope it, you do yeah. come down to that show, and we can make it uh, to uh, 